You know, it really wasn't that long ago that mountain bike journalists and brand managers worldwide were applauding the benefits of large volume tyres. But what happened to them? What happened to the plus size? Are they still fast? Are they still relevant? And what place do they have on e-mountain bikes? What is plus size? Well, it's a name that was dreamt up by the mountain bike industry to describe those larger volume tires. Now, it's most often associated with 27.5 inch wheel size, although you can get plus in 29. And it's not to be confused with fat tires, which are simply ridiculous because plus actually makes a lot of sense. So here's a selection of tires. As you can see, the plus, this is a three inch plus tire from a 2016 Specialized Levo. And as you can see, it's actually not too dissimilar to a 2.3 tire on a 29 inch wheel, if you have a look at the heights there. And over on the right hand side here is a modern day 2.8 tire on a 27.5. Now, if you compare that to a 29 inch wheel with a 2.5 tire and an aggressive tread pattern, you can see it's actually significantly higher. So what then were the great characteristics of these plus size tires? Well, they rolled faster and they offered more grip even with harder compounds and lower profile tread patterns. They were more comfortable and also gave an element of bounce, their own micro suspension, which is actually quite handy on the heavier bikes. They did, I suppose, have their downsides and some tires due to the thinner side walls had more punctures and had less support in cornering. But the quicker time, smoother riding and increased grip was simply not enough to focus people's attention. And within a few years, plus size was all but forgotten. But let's not forget, plus was really, really good. In the words of one UK journalist, the best plus size bikes deliver more traction, more control, and more comfort. So I'm kind of wondering, why did PLUS lose its popularity? Was it because mountain bike journalists and the mountain bike industry in general had moved on to other things? More gears, mixed wheel size, electric gears, and of course, electric bikes. That leaves me thinking, are they still as fast and as comfortable and as grippy as ever before? And is there a place for them? Now to answer that question and begin to understand why plus size lost some of its popularity, we need to set a context because three or four years ago, there was actually a lot of misunderstanding of wheel size. People were scared of wheel size change. If you look at World Cup downhillers from say 2015, 2016, many of them said that they would simply leave the sport if it came to a change of wheel size. But today, cross country racers, even Enduro World Series winner Sam Hill is on 29 inch wheels. So even the professionals then took some time to adjust the changes in wheel size. For the mountain bike population as a whole, 27.5 plus was actually seen as a stepping stone to 29. Today, 29 inch wheels have become much more widely accepted. And part of the reason for that is down to the plus size, which is actually quite strange because a 2.3 29 inch wheel is quite similar in height to a 27.5 by three plus tire. So the question is, will the sun shine once more on 27.5 plus wheel size? Well, I think it will. And I think the mountain bike industry left that wheel size a little bit too soon. We know that they're still as comfortable and offer as, more, as much grip as ever before. But of course, many people will be saying, are they still as fast? Well, yes, I think they are because the facts simply do not change. The tests that many mountain bike journalists worldwide did still hold true. And even the one that my colleague, the Don on GMBN did on 27.5 plus versus 27.5, those results still hold true. The plus is still faster. 
And another reason I hope they make a comeback is because one of my favorite tires and one I use quite a lot is actually the Maxxis High Roller 2.8, which can be considered as a plus size tire. And let's face it, many of the brands, whether it be Schwalbe, Michelin or Maxxis, still make large volume tires. Which is why most tire manufacturers make different tread compounds and tread patterns for certain conditions, whether it be fire road, smooth single track or technical downhill. And in many ways, some of the testers and brand managers were being a little bit unfair because they were using specific tires against a 27.5 plus tire, which at the time was merely an all round tire. Now at this point, for those who want to geek out, we're going to take a deep dive and examine the numbers, the weights and the measures. So if you're not that fussed about the numbers, you might want to fast forward. However, if you're after some facts and maybe a performance advantage, then keep on watching. So let's begin again then and look at some of the facts surrounding 27.5 plus in terms of the weights and the rim widths and the tire compounds. It's actually quite important to know these because you might be wanting to swap your 29 inch wheel e-bike to 27.5 plus because of all the benefits which we've already spoken about. It's actually quite interesting to see where the specialized Levo has been in recent years. In 2016, the bike had a 27.5 plus wheel on there with three inch tires. And then in 2017, it moved to a 27.5 plus in 2.8. Now, my current Levo has actually moved up to 29 inch wheels and I actually use a, a 2.5 Asagai on there because of its incredibly aggressive tread pattern, soft compound and sturdy sidewalls. Let's begin then with a look at the different heights of different wheel and tire combinations. Now, first of all, if you compare a 27.5 wheel with a 2.8 tire and an aggressive tread pattern to a three inch tire with a shallow tread pattern, you'll actually see that it's actually quite similar. And then if you compare that same three inch 27.5 wheel to a 29 inch wheel with a 2.3 inch tire, you'll actually see that's quite similar as well. However, when you go from a 29 in 2.3 up to a 2.5, the height is actually quite different. So whereas the heights were similar in many respects, it was the weight that was the sticking point of 27.5 plus tires. And many brands decided to make thinner side walls for fear of making tires that were too heavy. Of course, what I mentioned earlier, what this led to was tires that punctured quite easily and also had very little support when leaned over in corners. But really what they should have been thinking about was the system weight and not the weight of the tire in isolation. So let's take a look then at some facts because the system is the wheels, the rotors, discs and tires. Now just out of interest, I've weighed the system weight of rear wheels from Specialized Levo from 2016 to 2017 to the current day Levo. Now, it's worth noting that the Butcher tyre from 2016 weighed 1,045 grams, so actually quite a lightweight three inch tyre. But when you weigh the systems, and that incorporates the 200 mm rotors, the cassette, uh, and obviously the wheels and tyres combined, all with um, uh, a tube setup, uh, quite different. Now, the 2016 uh, system weighs 2.9 kilograms. The 2017 system weighs 3.2. However, the modern day version of the Levo wheel with this setup and these rims, remember we've got a 30 mil rim here compared to the 38 mil rims previously, weighs in at 2.7 kilos. So it's actually the lighter system, even though this Maxxis Asagai tire on here weighs 1,000, 344 grams, which puts it as the heaviest tire. Let's now focus on the weight of different wheels. Well, a pair of wheels without tires can weigh anything from 1500 grams for a set of trail wheels to over two kilograms for a downhill set. You also have the cassette and rotors to take into account, which will be either about 360 grams for a Shimano XTR or SRAM Eagle to over 600 grams for a lower price cassette. 
Now compare that with tires and you'll see that a pair of wheels and a pair of tires can actually be about the same weight. So what about if we compare the same wheel type but in different sizes? Well, a pair of Mavic D Max downhill in 27.5 weighs in at 1,990 grams, whereas a set in 29 inch only actually weighs 100 grams more. Uh, if you look at some lightweight carbon or trail wheels, you could be looking at about 1,500 grams for a pair. But what about tires? Now, many people actually worry about the weight of plus size tires, but what are the facts? Well, I've got a tire here, which is the Maxxis Minion DHR2. I've got it in 2.3 and 2.8 in exactly the same compound and tread pattern. And the weight difference is, well, 804 grams for the 2.3 and 980 grams for the 2.8 version. Now, that's actually under a kilo and still quite light when you compare it to a tire which we use quite a lot of on EMBN, and that is the Maxxis Asagai 29 by 2.5. And this weighs in at 1,334 grams. So as you can see, quite a difference. Now, it shouldn't really be any surprise that the Asagai is a heavier tire because it's actually got a heavier duty sidewall to it. This is a full-on World Cup downhill tire. But what I've done now is actually mount both tires to uh, similar Mavic wheels, although the Mavic on my right, the 29, is a Mavic D-Max Elite, whereas the 27.5 a Minion is mounted to a Mavic D-Max downhill. And when you weigh these systems together, they actually weigh exactly the same weight. Now, what I didn't mention there actually was that the 29 inch wheel is actually mounted tubeless, whereas the Minion in 27.5 was a tube version. So there's obviously that to take into account as well. But here's where it gets really, really quite interesting. Now, the 29 inch wheel, the outside diameter is 750 millimeters. The 28 is actually 725. Now that's gonna make a huge, huge difference to the handling of your bike in terms of the bottom bracket height. But I'm now gonna bring out a 2016 Levo, which is got a 2.8 tire. This is a 38 mil internal room width. And as you can see, it's lower again. So we've actually gone down to 715 here. So 715, 725, and 750 outside diameters. But it is important to take a look at the weight of different types of tyre. Now a pair of Schwalbe Eddy Current in soft compound weighs in at 3 kilos. An Asagai 29, 2.6 for my downhill versions and as I mentioned under 2 kilos for a pair of Minion 2.8s. Which brings us back to what many people found to be the characteristics with bigger volume 2.8 3 inch tyres. And that was that a wider tire, even in a hard compound, provided more traction and stronger braking than a narrower tire in a softer compound. And of course, with the added benefit of less rolling resistance plus harder wearing. The problem was that even with all those benefits, many brand managers and journalists did find plus tires to be less precise. And part of the reason for that is because they were doing their testing on tracks that they knew. Now, this is where I do believe that plus still has a place because if you're doing general riding on tracks that you don't know, plus can significantly hide rider error. Plus, of course, all those other factors which I've discussed before, such as comfort, speed, and grip. Okay, a few final things to discuss about Plus. Uh, one thing is the tyre pressures. Now, uh, three or four years ago, many brands were actually telling riders to run less than 20 PSI if, uh, if, you've, got a, if you've got a large, maybe 2.8 or 3 inch tyre, which is actually quite ludicrous because obviously the tyre is going to squirm in the corners. I'm looking at this Minion and it's actually recommends 17 to 35, which is about right. Now, what about if you're thinking of switching to plus size? Well, the first thing to take into account is, will your frame be able to accommodate that larger capacity tire? Secondly, don't forget that there is gonna be a significant change in the geometry of your bike if you go from 29 to 27.5 plus. Like I said, there's a 25 millimeter difference in the height of these tires. Now, some bikes have actually got a flip chip on them, which lets you switch between uh, different wheel size, but you need to check that out. 
Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, it's quite obviously a complex subject, but uh, let us know your thoughts on plus size in the comments down below. And don't forget to follow us on social media.